Hello and welcome to the video. It's been two months since I deleted Windows 10 and installed Arch Linux on my main computer at home, so I thought it would be a good time to reflect on why am I still on Arch Linux, why am I keeping this system, so I decided to compile my top 10 reasons why am I sticking with Arch Linux. And for that occasion I created this presentation for you, the viewer. So my number 10 reason is that, well, I put a lot of effort in learning up on Arch and installing it, which means all the time I spent in the virtual machine before installing it on the real computer, all the time spent on the bus reading the Arch wiki, etc. So once I put this much effort in it, I don't want to make this effort to waste. So this is one reason I am still sticking with Arch Linux, but this is kind of the least important thing, because if it was terrible, then no matter the effort put in it, I would change operating systems. Now number nine is that it is a nuance, but it's also it's very important that it's super easy to build new packages for Pac-Man. So this is not something every user will run into, and even if you run into, you don't run into too often, but it's a good thing to know that you don't have to put too much effort in it, if you have to make a new package for yourself for maybe a software you wrote for yourself to manage your system or just something that's not available anywhere even in the AUR and you need to use the software or a theme or something like that. So number eight is that especially compared to my previous Windows 10 install it is super fast so let's take a look at how fast it is to boot this system. So at this point I just press the button and now it is starting up and it takes you can see quite some time to get to the post stage of the boot and now it's in the grub already and loads the initial RAM disk it starts up system D checks the file system and boom we are in the login screen with our uh, desktop manager, or, sorry, display manager, and then we enter the password and the budget desktop environment is already loaded up and is ready to use. So it takes you about 35 seconds to get to the point where you can use your computer after pressing the power button and from that 10 seconds is just the motherboard um, while well, warming up and going to the post stage. In Windows 10 it was more than twice this time, unfortunately. So, well, this is number eight for why am I sticking with Arch Linux. So let's see, it's number seven is the flexibility for customization for my needs, no forced bloat, so I can bloat my system if I want to. If I want to, I can install every office suit possible, but why would I do that? But I am not forced to do any of that. I am not forced to install a specific kernel, I can choose whichever kernel I want to use, I can use whichever um, display manager I want to use, whichever desktop environment I want to use, I can use more than one if I want to, I can just switch between them. And this is a kind of flexibility that is inherent to Arch Linux, you can do it on a lot of other distributions of course, but Number six, Arch Linux forces you to learn about the system. So when you install Arch Linux, you already have to study up on a lot of things, which comes in handy next time when you want to change your system. So if you install a very user-friendly, beginner-friendly distro with a graphical um, installer, like let's say you try the XFCE edition of Linux Mint, but you figure out after maybe two months that XFCE is not the desktop environment for you. So what we will do is maybe you download another ISO from the web and install maybe a Mate edition or I don't know, GNOME edition and try that. But in Arch you are forced to learn how to install a desktop environment so you can at any time just go for your uh, package database and download and install another desktop environment and check that out or even use it parallel with the one that you've been using previously. 
which is a nice thing to do, I think. And number five is that, so this flexibility of Arch Linux comes with the convenience of having binary packages in the repositories, not like, uh, you know, like Gen 2, where you have to basically compile everything for your system. And this comes with the limitations that officially Arch Linux is only for the 64-bit um, the uh, architecture. There are some forks for other architectures, but this binary packaging means that uh, it is quite architecture dependent, this distribution. And also it means that you cannot do partial updates because all the binaries that are put into the, um, the repositories have been compiled to the set uh, of the other packages. So if there are any interdependencies, then you are screwed if your packages, package versions don't align. But of course, it means that you don't need to compile the software for yourself, which is a huge plus for Arch Linux. Number four is that the non-free or proprietary drivers are available in the main repositories of the shelf. So for me, like I have an NVIDIA card, which I tried, but does not work with the Nuvo drivers. So I need to use, unfortunately, the proprietary drivers, which as you know, you can hate it from a um, philosophical perspective, but from a technical perspective, it's very easy to just install them from the main repositories, which is also a very uh, good plus point for Arch Linux over other uh, distributions, which uh, are more uh, free software oriented like Parabola or even uh, Void Linux where you have to add additional repositories if you want to install the proprietary drivers for your hardware. Number three is a kind of controversial but I think Arch Linux has a great community, a great forum which uh, has a lot of people so Arch Linux is a uh, can be difficult to deal with, but enough people uses this distribution. So if you run into a problem, it's uh, quite likely that someone else also run into that problem. So you can troubleshoot together, ask for help and solve any problem that arises. And of course, because of the rolling nature of Arch, there will be some problems that arise. Number two is the even greater wiki which has a lot of information, not just on the Arch specific things or on the distribution itself, but also on a lot of third party software. It contains enough information to set you up of uh, using it, or, you know, at least has uh, the proper uh, references for so that you can go on your journey to learn about them. And finally, the number one reason is that now I can proudly say, by the way, I use Arch on every Linux forum that's around there. Oh no, the real number one reason is the freedom to do exactly what I want with my PC, which ties into the abundance of packages available and the way that Arch does not force you to use specific things, but also you can just mix and match all the software you need to use. Well, there are some limitations, of course, like for the budget desktop, you cannot use any uh, screensaver you want to use because the developers kind of hard-coded their fork of the GNOME screensaver to operate well with Budgie and they don't support other screensavers. But for example, I could use my uh, file manager of choice, Nemo, which is originally for the Cinnamon desktop. I can use the GNOME software, if I want to, I can use Qt based software if I want to, I can mix and match. Well, I have to do that for myself because Arch comes with none of them. So it gives you the freedom to build your system from the ground up to the state which you want it to be without having to, you know, remove defaults or stuff like that. So these are my top 10 reasons for sticking with Arch Linux. So I used this uh, presentation with, um, template from the open office directory, which comes with this uh, attribution and share alike unported license for, for Creative Commons, which means that this video also has to be licensed under Creative Commons attribution share alike 3.0 unported license. So you can use this video with these um, 
caveats that are in this license. I'm just telling you. Okay, so thank you for staying with me for today. If you enjoyed this video, consider throwing it a like. If you want more Arch Linux videos from me, then just click on the subscribe icon there, or you can watch other videos on this channel considering Arch Linux and some other stuff. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.